Check out this clip from Headspace Studios' podcast series, Dear Headspace. Hi, dear Headspace. My name is Catherine, calling from Massachusetts. Uh, The question I'd like to ask is, how do you know when you're ready for marriage? If that is something that you have seen for yourself. And I guess specifically as well, if you are someone who is already in a long-term relationship, um, feeling all the right things like talking and seeing a future long-term, uh, how do you know, what does it feel like when you are certain you want to make that next step? And I guess specifically as well, if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily have a real life example of a marriage you want to emulate, you know, no one in your life necessarily fits what you see and or desire for yourself, would just love to hear your various perspectives. Thank you. Thank you for this question, Catherine. This is, I was, I loved when I, as soon as I came across this question, I was like, oh, we've got to choose this because I, because I was like, it, my initial reaction is it's almost the inverse of what you would think it would be. Like to, like for me, to a certain extent, you just know, mm. um, you know, and you know, because of all the ones where you didn't know. And to me, all of every relationship I had before the one that stuck, I was questioning it. And that's one of the ways that I knew it wasn't right. Like when Mary showed up, I just knew it was just like, yeah, obviously we're going to do this. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, my relationship status is intentionally single. I've been intentionally single for the last (laughs) four years, but um, I think I've learned a lot about what I need um, in a partnership and the type of qualities Mm -hmm. that I want in my partner and the things that I value and I love that you asked the question about what do you do when you don't see relationships or marriages that reflect what it is that you want? Because I realize that, you know, we all have our own individual and unique needs. And I realize, like, for me, freedom and individuality is really important for me. Um, and sharing that with other people, I realize, like, that isn't, you know, people assume that you need to be clingy and together and all the time. And that doesn't allow me to show up as my full self. I actually find it really suffocating. And so there's been this realization and acceptance of what I am desiring. I'm creating it in this moment and I'm writing the book for what I want in marriage right Mm -hmm. now. Um, And that's been liberating and also equal parts scary as well, because there isn't really anyone that I've connected with that has been aligned in that and also uh, that I've seen out there that can honor that other than Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, but that's like a bit too far out. But yeah, so I've just, I've been giving myself a lot of grace of like, I'm creating what it is that I want in this moment. And there really isn't the blueprint for that. And it's freeing, but scary at the same time. (laughs) And to a certain extent, like there doesn't have to be a blueprint, right? Like, like I didn't, I didn't have uh, healthy relationships modeled for me as a kid. But you know what I was able to do? I was able to say, I don't want that. I don't want that. And then create out of that. Like I saw all kinds of things that were examples of what I will not do. And and by the way, that could be the same thing of parenting. Many people are good parents who don't come from parents who did a great job. And like I, I use that same logic or mentality of like, okay, this made me feel bad when my parents did this. So therefore, I'm going to choose to do this instead. And I think you can do that in relationships too. Like I did not feel loved or supported. And so therefore, I'm going to look for love and support. And what does that mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love I love everything that you've just shared because it's reminding me of the importance of being able to even define what marriage means to you. I think I was afraid to be married because the definition of it that I had learned was from my parents who I love so much, but are extremely religious. And so some of the values, traditional values within that didn't feel good for me at all. And I, it was really important for me to define, like, if I'm married to someone, like, what does marriage even mean? What does a relationship even mean to me? Um, And what is the importance that I even place on this thing that I'm being told to do? But I haven't really taken the time to, like, sit with it and see, like, does this actually feel 
good? Does it feel right for me in this moment? Um, And that's why, again, like being single has allowed me to get really clear on like, okay, in my next relationship, these are some of the things that I desire, which was the freedom aspect of it. It's like really important for me. And I think another thing is because I also did this looking at my parents of like, the pendulum swing of going so much to the opposite side of like, that is what I do not want. And so I must be like so far on this other side. Um, And you can actually miss out on potential partners or experiences if you are so afraid of like maybe going back to this thing that you really don't want. And I think this is where my practice has come in of like being able just to notice how my body feels like around certain people or when I feel that sense of ease and calm. And it may not be like if I'm ready for marriage, but I actually feel good around this person. They may not look like how I want them to, or they may not sound like it, but it's like I'm following this sense of like curiosity and this sense of feel goodness that may lead me to a potential partner, which may lead to potential marriage. But Mm -hmm. I think just basing it off of stories that we may be holding, it may not be as helpful as we think. Well, I love I love that what you're saying. And it makes me think of like two things. One thing is the thing my boss used to say. And another is something that older Robin now says to young folks who are asking me this question, which is, do they make you a better person? And it doesn't mean like, I don't mean by that, like, are you at volunteering at a soup kitchen because they they want you to do that? I mean, do they bring out like a side of you that's you growing? Like mm. Mary, she has certain qualities, like she just has this kindness that forces me to look at my behavior. Mm. Like if I cross a threshold and I'm like not, kind to her I can see it on her face and she doesn't fight back and so then it it forces me to be like you're being a turd right now you have to stop this and my old that old girlfriend that I was mentioning earlier like we would just fight like she did never back down I didn't ever back down and so like we were both at our worst but Mary and like forces me to be a better person in many ways and and the other piece of advice that my boss used to say is and it's so simple and I love it he would say do you vacation well together Mm. and what's so lovely about that is like if you have the same vacation vibe it's like think about it the pressures of spending money the pressures of time and change and travel like how you show up at the airport how you take the tsa how you how you take when all of a sudden your flight is canceled and you know and and like how you treat people on vacation like it's really like a microcosm of a relationship and i think it's a really wonderful way like you know and i met mary immediately and we were like the best vacationers and i was like oh we'll be all right because things start off kind of like you're in the love bubble in the beginning relationships get really hard yeah so if you don't start off in a great place yeah i don't know where you're going with this that's so true me my ex did not vacation well at all (laughs) like now that i'm thinking about it there was one time we had just got (laughs) back from the caribbean and this man insisted on bringing mangoes through customs and i'm like you can't you're not allowed to bring mangoes (laughs) Rob, when we get to Miami and all of the customs officers are laughing at us and I'm like, see, I told you, you can't bring me. He's like, I've done it before. I was like, you know what? You and your mangoes can stay here. I'm going. I'm catching the flag. (laughs) (laughs) And it was in that moment I knew we had no future. Um, But yeah, I love that. Mangoes in Miami is like your short story about this. Oh my gosh, I should write a book. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I love that. I've been listening a lot to um, Jillian Tarecki's podcast, though. It talks all about love and dating and relationships advice, and she has a really grounded perspective on it. So that's a resource I would recommend outside of Dear Headspace, of course. But yeah, just listening to her talk from such a real and honest place, too, because I think at times, again, we can romanticize what marriage is and think that marriage will fix everything. And then it's just like, you're shining a light more on maybe things that you weren't aware of. And yeah, her approach to relationships has been really eye-opening for me of like, you know, red and really understanding red flags and green flags and actually having to do the work and st- and study yourself and, you know, be open to putting yourself on investigation as well and not just looking at your partner because it's really easy to do that in relationships, I think. 
Yeah. 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 Who you show up is just as important as who you are across the table from, I think. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, good luck, Catherine. We're with you and we're sending you vibes and, and we hope that, you know, that you find the right person if who you are currently with is not the right person. But, you know, it's it's all it's all out there. There's a lid yeah. for every pot. You got this, girl. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy. And be kind to each other. 